Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette and welcome to Board Game Inquisition and this is May's Monthly Roundup. So this is the monthly roundup I've probably been worried about the most. A, because the month seemed to disappear surprisingly quickly. Now, I say that probably about every month, but it definitely felt the case here. And secondly, I was worried, like, what what, what was I going to tell you, you know? Um, so I had to sit and, and think to myself and go, well, I'm just going to be honest and tell you about my gaming habits throughout the month. Um, so for those of you here for the first time, welcome, hello, lovely to meet you. Um, and this is the video where I sit down um, once a month, unsurprisingly, and I talk about the board games I acquired for my collection, um, the games I've been playing, maybe any kind of trades I've made and of course I encourage you at home to tell me about your gaming habits. I really really love reading your messages and seeing what games have got you excited, it gets me thinking about them too um, and I just think it's such a fun activity isn't it? It's not very often you get to just kind of splurge with somebody and tell them about the amazing games you've been playing and um, without kind of I don't know scaring them a little bit so um, I, I am I'm ready for all of your positivity also your negativity too because you know not all games are made for everybody. So this video, um, and I say this is yet again about all of them, I make these really gross generalizations the longer I do this, but this one should be short. I hope so. Um, we'll see, because like I said, I feel like this month has really, really disappeared. Um, very quickly, a little note before I jump right into all of the games. You may have noticed I'm in a new location, which is the really big news for um, Board Game Inquisition. And I'll talk about that a little bit, maybe at the end. Yeah, so if you want to hear about games, games. Uh, if you want to hear a little bit about me and the games, you can get that at the end of the episode. Sounds fair, right? So nobody has to listen to anything they don't want to listen to. Okay, so let's start off um, with the games I've acquired this month. I hadn't intended it really on being anything because I'm not going to lie, we're kind of at... Yeah, we're pretty much at the bottom of our games we actually want pile. However, our games we need to trade away or perhaps sell pile is growing ever larger. Um, I think the reasoning behind this is that we've kind of cut our collection down to maybe about 180 games or so. And I don't think we want it to get any bigger than that. Um, maybe not necessarily smaller, but it means that we're finding that we're being much more picky about which games we keep because the ones we are keeping are basically battling off all these other new games and things we're trying out. And if they've managed to, you know, stick around this long, they're probably going to stick around forever. So it's hard to get a new game in there or hard for a game, I think, to make itself stand out and be something special enough that we want to keep it in the collection. Now, that seems like a really weird complaint all by itself. Surely each game should have some special or cool thing about it that makes you stand up and go, oh, this is cool, this game does that thing. But I just, I don't know, maybe I'm a bit jaded, but I'm feeling like a lot of games aren't feeling very unique at all. Like, I look at Kickstarter at the moment and, and oh, it's another dungeon game with miniatures, cool, but well, what's so special about it? What makes this different? Um, and I'd like to see more kind of innovative, innovative games coming in the future. So what I'm actually trying to say here is I've been playing a lot of very good games, um, very solid games, games I could definitely see, see people enjoying, but they're not great games. You know what I mean? As in we had fun playing them the first time, would we play this again over this? Not so much. So this is kind of, so it, we're in this kind of weird um, state when it comes to new games where it's become difficult to find something truly special or something that's noteworthy, but it's not that we're playing bad games either. So let's start at the beginning of this list, which wasn't supposed to be very long at all, actually, um, but this is how it starts out. So the first game acquired this month is one that's actually been on my wish list for a really long time, but I didn't think is right for us as a group. Um, and by us as a group, I mean myself, my husband, we, we play all our games pretty much two player. And especially now since the lockdown, you know, the, you're, you're stuck with these things. So um, the first game is Ethnos. And Ethnos is an area control game of sorts, but it's also a set collection game and kind of like uh, it's a hand management game too, um, in which you're trying to claim particular areas of the board with different clans. And you do this by collecting cards of the same color in your hand and placing them down. So if you put, want to put a marker in a particular zone the first time, it'll cost you, you know, two cards or whatever of that type. And then if someone wants to put another marker down there, they'll have to pay extra for the number of tokens already down. So 
this one came up and shut up and sit down many many years ago and it kind of made it rise to fame a little bit or popularity and I always wanted to try it even though area control games don't work well in our house or ever um yeah just one I think area control games when you play them one-on-one -on -one, it's just not the same right so hence why this is at the bottom of the wish list per se so off the bat I'd heard that Ethnos wasn't the most beautiful looking game it's not a lie, it's not particularly pretty, everything about it is very generic, but the component quality is really, really good. Um, I love those kind of little multicolored stacky tokens you have um, for putting out on the board. You know, everything about it is quite nicely done, it's just like somebody didn't bother with art or something like that. Um, but gameplay as a whole, on the one hand it was interesting to start with, so it was kind of cool, I was collecting sets of particular, you know, warriors and stuff um, to put out on the board. Um, and then it got to a point where I was literally just drawing cards off the top of the deck in the hope I was going to get the right color to match what I needed it to match. So it left the game feeling really really random, it left a terrible sour taste in my mouth um, and I was like oh this is kind of ick and I wondered was there maybe like a variant so where because you reveal some cards um, to choose from but they don't get refilled, they only, they only get refilled by cards people discard from their own hands. So it just all got stale very very quickly for me and we looked up for the variant and Sure enough some people just said just just play it by um you know taking or revealing cards from the top of the deck putting them in front so you can kind of choose from those so i tried that and it helped a little bit and then i was reminded why area control games aren't particularly good in our house or my husband manages to put out like three separate tokens in three different zones all in one turn and i'm sitting there going I need a purple guy to go with my purple guy. You know, it's just we're on such different levels when we play these kinds of things. But I will say one thing, Ethanol surprised me. It did a, a lot better than I thought it was going to do. And I could see it really being very fun. It's a really light um, area control game. And I like the set collection aspect. I love the fact that it's kind of, you start with so many races you're going to use um, for each time you play, but there's an um, there's more than you play with. So you can change them in and out, have something different each time. And a lot of them have unique abilities and things. And I thought all of that was really cool. Actually, I do think Ethnos is a pretty good game just not for us. Um, so that is Ethnos. And this month saw actually the delivery of not one, but two Kickstarter projects. Well, hey, um, so I don't often back Kickstarter. It's not that I don't believe in the project. It's just, it's a long time for your money to be tied up waiting for a game. So it has to be something really, really special or something we very much care about um, to back it. So both of these projects ran late, well over a year late, maybe a year and a half late for reasons no one really understood. Um, but the first one to arrive was the Alien Frontiers expansion set. Well, whatever I'm calling that. And this was a real punt of a, a Kickstarter. Um, and this is because, so Alien Frontiers is a dice game. Um, you roll dice, you put them out on spaceships, you do particular actions. It's really well known, I think, as being like the first board game Kickstarter. Um, and it's it's okay, but when we got the game first, I just traded for it. As in, I, I traded for it and I think we played maybe one game and the Kickstarter was um, just ending for all of the expansions because there's lots of different races and things you can play with. And that sounded really, really fun. And I'd heard really good things about the expansions that I really enhanced the game. And I was like, oh, what, what we maybe we should, you know, go for the expansions. So we, we kind of did it on a whim because literally, as we said, we hadn't played the game all that much, um, but we went for it anyway. And oddly enough, we chose then not to play any Frontier until the expansions arrived. So I haven't played the game in a, in a long time. Um, so the expansion finally showed up after all sorts of errors and difficulties and it just felt like somebody forgot about it for like a year. Um, but it got here and we opened it up and we're like, right, we're gonna play Alien Frontiers, now's the time. <sighs> And the game was so bland. <laughs> I know a lot of people really, really love this. Um, and I can, I can, you know what? I can maybe see the appeal to it, but for us, it just felt a bit basic. And maybe that's because it's a two player. We found ourselves performing the same kind of actions because it's kind of like, it's kind of like um, worker placement, except with dice. So we kept finding ourselves wanting to do the same actions the whole time. And when there's only two of us playing, it meant 
there were certain turns where I just couldn't do anything um, and then v vice versa. It's like we got into a rhythm of basically blocking each other's actions. Um, and so we had a look at what was in the expansion box and we went, is this going to change, you know, anything about the original game? Well, no, not really. Um, and that was the end of Alien for Tears. Uh, I can't believe we waited that long um, and ordered a Kickstarter to go with it. But um, you know what, I think, it, I suppose, well, was it worth it? Not particularly, but at least it's, I suppose it's one less game I have to wonder about. Um, but I think if you do love Alien Frontiers, I think the expansion might will be a nice touch because um, there were already a bunch of expansions out. This is just kind of a box with all of them in it. Um, and the good news is I've already traded it away, but I'll get to that in trades. So the next thing that came from Kickstarter is one that we really, really were excited about it, or at least my husband was. And this is for Viceroy, and this was the... I want to say, like, Tides of Time, but that's the name of another game. What's it's really called? Times of Darkness expansion. Um, so Viceroy is this kind of little-known gem, um, and we've had it for years, absolutely years. I don't know where my husband picked it up, but... Um, it's basically a game about building pyramids of, well, pyramids of power, as it would say on the box cover. Um, and it is a, a, a resource management game in which you're buying tiles to place in your pyramid. And every time you place something in your pyramid, you'll get a bonus and then you'll use that to build more parts to your pyramid. And the higher up you go, the better it gets. And it was a very, very kind of tight, I, I almost want to say, punishing game because it was one of the few games where you'd have to like sometimes not do anything for a turn just to have enough gems to be able to do something else it was one of those where you had to really plan out what you were doing or you could shoot yourself in the foot um i've never been much good at viceroy but i could appreciate its merits it's an it's a it's an interesting game and um, my husband loves 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 the thing and by accident must have been a year and a half ago or so now i saw an ad for the expansion for viceroy on Board Game Geek, and I was like, do you know there's a Viceroy expansion? And of course, uh, you know, that, that started, well, quickly, we'll, we'll have to get it, but there was actually only a couple of days on it. I was amazed we hadn't heard about it. So the expansion um, turned up um, there last week, and we got a play match. This is the first time I think I've ever seen my husband go all in on something. We got, like, gem tokens and sleeves, but not enough sleeves to sleeve the expansion and the, the base game. I'm just like, ah! what were you thinking um and basically how this expansion works is it's got a series of modules you can add to the base game to play with right pretty cool so i sat down we tried all of the different modules and the first module um is one where you basically have these underworld characters and you build underneath your pyramid Ooh. and the special thing about these guys is that they basically They'll give you something amazing, but it comes at a price. And the price is there's a bag of tokens of which, you know, terrible things can befall you. Some of them are blanks, but every time you want to perform this special ability, like get out some really cool things, you have to get tokens out of the bag and keep one, right? So it's, it's kind of a gambling mechanic. And the problem we instantly found with it was it made the game incredibly easy. So for instance, like a lot of the time they would just give you six diamonds. So diamonds counted for any color of gem to build your pyramid with, right? These, that's amazing. And all you had to do was to maybe take a, a negative token. And, and some of them are blank, so you can get away with murder. And we found all of a sudden the game got so easy, we ended up building these really giant pyramids because we had access to all these gems. The game lost, you know, its tightness and its meanness. And I can see people enjoying that, but for us it was just, oh my God, like it was like a rocket shut off we it was just um as my husband put it, it was playing in easy mode um and he's not necessarily wrong but i can see i can see the merit to it i think if you haven't played maybe viceroy before it'll make it much more welcoming and definitely a little bit more fun um the other expansion or the other module to come with it was one where you have these kind of aristocrat characters so these are cards like everything else that goes in your pyramid except they'll have a special bonus on them and you can't place them on the first layer of your pyramid and i like those they actually fit really really nicely um there's also a new starting um tile um for to start the game with and it's kind of a multicolor one and it gives you a bonus you can start the game with all these colors and stuff um already yet again feeling a little bit like easy mode and then the last option that they've added in is a way for you to fight monsters 
yes, you fight monsters and the, these monsters will require you to pay gems to get special bonuses. And most of the time they didn't feel like they were worth doing at all. It felt like a terrible waste of gems when you could just build your pyramid instead. Um, and I don't know, I just, I didn't feel, feel like it knit, they were, they were worthwhile enough to knit in with the rest of the game. Now maybe we're just terrible purists and we just want to play the original with more cards. I might. And I can see where some of these design ideas were going, but the only ones that really felt worthwhile were the whole, you know, the new starting tile thing, which does make the game a bit easier, but I can see why that's there. And those aristocrat cards, which were actually kind of cool. So now you've kind of got my full summary of this expansion because we played a lot of it in the hope that we would feel better about it. My husband wasn't impressed, um, which is kind of sad, but I can I can see how others would enjoy it, especially if you found Viceroy to be particularly difficult and mean and a bit taxing. This really opens up all of that for people. So yeah, so that's Viceroy, Tides of Darkness. It's also got some very beautiful art, actually. Okay, so let's hop down the list. Okay, oh good. So there's only one more in these piles of things we bought games. Um, and this is Scoville from Tasty Minstrel Games. Way! So I love I loved Tasty Minstrel Games. I really like a lot of their titles. I have a bunch of them still on my kind of wish list that are cheap enough to buy in the States, but slightly more expensive here. Um, so I was always hopeful that eventually I might get a copy of Scoville for cheap but um, it didn't really happen. But I got a second-hand copy instead, so I'm delighted with that. And this is a game about growing peppers, as far as I'm aware. It's got like little pepper meeples inside it and like a little plantation zone. And that's basically all I know about it. And it's a Euro game. So that should be super fun. That hopefully will get played at the weekend. We've had a bunch of arrivals literally in the past day or so that it leaves me with nine new games to play. Um, and I say that, you know, like it isn't a, a great pleasure and honour to be able to do so, but I'm really looking forward to that. So if you've played Scoville before, have you got any tips or tricks or anything I should know? Um, I would love to know more. So that's everything that we bought. Hurrah! Um, did you buy any games yourself um, recently? Has anybody done any kind of like panic buying because of the whole COVID thing where you're like, well, we're stuck at home, we may as well play plenty of games. Because um, I see quite a number of people definitely trading games and things. It seems to have opened up a little bit around here. Um, yeah, so I definitely want to hear about your stuff. Now, I also had a number of review copies show up, which I'm super, super excited to tell you about. And these come from Forbidden Games. So thank you very much, Forbidden Games, for being super nice and kind. Um, and the first thing that's on it, and many of you will have heard or seen this before, and this is Raccoon Tycoon. Um, and Raccoon Tycoon, is just, it looks adorable. Oh my gosh. Um, it's one I've had my eye on for absolutely ages. And so um, really, really excited to try this. And this is a, a game where you have basically animals in, in outfits, like anthropomorphized animals, um, running a train, trying to make money. It's got real money in the box. Woohoo! Um, and it's fantastic. Um, I can't wait to play that. I've unboxed these, so I know what's in them, but not how to play them yet. I also have, um, there we go, make sure I get the title right, Railroad Rivals. So this is definitely a game about the stock market and making trains. It's got some fantastic cardboard components in it. I'm looking forward to seeing how that plays. And the last thing is what I'm calling like the wild card. So Extraordinary Adventures Pirates. Um, so pirate games, I'm not a big fan of at the moment, I'm not going to lie. I watched a show and I've lo I learned a little bit about pirates being involved in slavery and it makes me a little uncomfortable. Um, I don't know if you guys find that, but there's certain board games as well that reference slavery and things like that. And I'm just, I'm not comfortable with it. I think, you know, board games, it like, there's one thing to be historically accurate, but you are essentially playing a game for fun too. And there are better ways of representing history or things to talk about than horrible stuff really you know what I mean um so pirates are kind of on the fence for me but the good news about this one is on the box already um there is a person of color and a lady and I'm like oh okay so someone's tried to broaden the whole you know here's a bunch of men on a ship option for pirates so I'm looking forward to trying it out and seeing what the game is about because there are an awful lot of pirate games so I'm hoping there's something that makes that one particularly special so yeah, so that, that's all my, excitement, all my excitement and reviews. So you'll see those hopefully coming soon. Um, excellent. All right. So 
Shall we move on to the second portion? And this is where I talk about trades. Um, trading has been extremely light for a while. Unsurprisingly, people can't get out of their houses. People can't post things. It makes sense. So trading has been very limited. Um, but we did manage one trade. Um, and so this one was particularly exciting. So I traded away, um, and don't be shocked and appalled with me, my copy of Obsession. Um, Obsession is a, a game I absolutely adore, set in kind of Victorian England, you know, Mr. Darcy kind of thing. And it's a beautiful, wonderful game. I reviewed it. So if you ever want to learn a little bit more about it, there you go. Um, but it's just one that wasn't getting played. Um, and I tried a number of times to play it. I don't think it's because it's bad or anything like that, because it definitely isn't. It's a very good game. But as I said, things are just getting squeezed out so that really great games are just... We're just not playing them as much as we'd like. Um, so I traded that away, but in exchange, I got the following. So the first game is Majolica. Have you heard of this before? No? Um, Majolica looks suspiciously like Azul. And I think they came out maybe around the same time-ish. I don't know. But it is also it is a tiling game in the nature of Azul, except that it doesn't have those big chunky tiles. Um, but it looks beautiful. It's an abstract puzzle game. And I'm really looking forward to trying that out. Um, that's one that doesn't pop up very often, so I was very lucky to be able to trade for a copy of that. The next thing on the list is Keyflower the Market expansion. Is it Market? Did I call it Market? Yes, I did. I keep wanting to call it Merchant, but it's not Merchant. Um, so that means now we have two expansions for Keyflower, which is one of my absolute favorite games. So that's always exciting. And then the next thing that came as well was a copy of Puerto Rico. Hurrah! So as you may remember last month, I was waxing lyrical about San Juan and how much I really loved it and how it was considered to be Puerto Rico, the card game. So now I'm going to try Puerto Rico. Um, also, it's a numbered game, so it goes on my numbered game shelf. <laughs> I'm a terrible collector at heart. Um, but Puerto Rico has a really good reputation, so I'm dying to see what it's actually about. Um, if you know more than I do, let me know. I, I, I love hearing people's insights, so that's Puerto Rico. And then the very final trade we managed to make this month came about by accident. Um, because we've been trying to sell a number of our, our games that we have for trade. We have so many right now, we've run out of space. So we're trying to see what we can get rid of. And somebody offered us a trade while we were trying to sell the games. So we traded away our copy of Alien Frontiers with the new shiny Kickstarter expansion that we didn't particularly enjoy for a copy of the Kickstarter edition of Tainted Grail. Now Tainted Grail actually wasn't even on my radar for many a good reason. Um, it's a cooperative game, so we play together. It's a game with miniatures. It's kind of a dungeon-y looking thing. I'm not going to lie, I don't know a whole lot about it because I just wasn't interested in it. And I know when it arrived before Christmas, a lot of people were really excited about it, but I haven't seemed to have heard too much about it since. Um, but in our estimation, a game that we haven't played is better than a game we have played and we didn't like. Um, so that was a really big surprise. I did not expect it to be a Kickstarter edition. It was in a Kickstarter box and everything. I was like, did, did we rip this person off? Did we, did we give them enough value? of games so we had to sit down and work it out before we, we decided maybe we don't feel too guilty um so yeah so that that's random that's what i call that that's random but i'm looking forward to trying it out and see what it's about i think sometimes it's so much fun to try something you would never have tried otherwise i think that's the main reason to have friends who board game because they'll have games maybe that you would never have bought for yourself but you get to try and find out what they're about um so yeah these were the surprise trades that happened um this month real surprise like literally all in the last week so delighted with that just means i have a very large stack of board games to get to um, so yeah, so that's been all of that. So yeah, have you managed to trade for anything? Um, I, ask, I ask this every month. Very few people seem to trade other than myself. Um, yeah, it's something maybe more people should look into, but at this time, yeah, maybe not the best. All right, so I'm more in the log. I don't know why I'm looking at my watch because I have no idea what time I started. So let's go into the games I've played. <laughs> Uh, you're going to laugh at this with me because while, you know, recording this whole thing about here's the games I've acquired, I got a message. Your DPD driver, Roland, will deliver your order today between 10.50 and 11.50. I'm like, what did I order? It's got, my, it's got my name on it. Anything that was real would come to my husband's name. So I think there's another board game on the way. Um, I'm not going to tell you what it is because I don't know what it is, but I'll, I'll tell you next month. So maybe that'll keep you coming back for more information. That's just random, isn't it? Uh, I have a, I have a very lucky life sometimes. I love deliveries. 
Okay, so what am I going to talk about that I was playing? Well, I actually talked about Viceroy already, and it's one um, we played a number of games of just to test everything out. Um, Because you know when you play a game the first time and it doesn't feel right, and you're like, oh, maybe we just need to do this or not play this bit with this bit, you know, to try and kind of save it. Does that make sense? So we did a lot of we did a lot of that. I'm just actually, you know what? I'm just a little disappointed, but not really for me, but for my other half because he was so excited about this. Um, And yeah, it did. It didn't work out as we'd hoped, but sure, I'm pretty sure we can play with some of the modules and not the others. You know, it, it'll be salvageable. So the next game I'm going to talk about, actually, and I realised I do this quite a bit, right? So I tell you guys, I got these new games, right? I tell you they've been delivered and I'm like, I haven't played them yet. And I come back next month and I don't tell you what happened when I played them, right? It's a bit of a flaw in my plan. So I'm going to attempt to tell you about some of the games I've played since last month that, that arrived. Um, and I got two Stefan Fell games last month, um, so one of which was Amerigo. Um, and I'll talk about that one first. So Amerigo, I'm going to start with saying, was really, really fun. <laughs> it was really, really fun. And it is a, a game where there is a big map with islands on it. And it's up to you to go out and put things out on the islands. Um, and what you do is there is a cube tower. So you may have seen these before in, in other games. Clearly they were trendy around the time. And that will, will debate based on what color cubes come out of the tower will determine what actions everyone can do for the round. So it's kind of like this cube pusher. And the more cubes in a particular color, the better the action is. Woo, it reminded me a little bit of Notre Dame, I'm not gonna lie. Um, but it was just such a blast. Um, it also had like pirates coming for you, so you wanted to have like your cannons ready to defeat the pirates or you would lose things. And you had your little ship and you sail around to the islands. And when you build stuff on the island, you would get items that were already on the island. Like it was really basic, but really fun. Um, I really, really liked it where I go. Um, and yeah, I can't wait to play some more of it. Like I did the thing where I just took over the big island and I was like, I was just like to my husband, you can deal with all the other islands. This one, this one is mine. So I spent the entire game making sure I could I could fill out the island. Um, it was just a blast. It, it was just entertaining and easy and still kind of, you know, not boring. So that makes sense. Because sometimes games when they're easy, they get, they get boring. This one, you still have cool choices to make, but they were just kind of fun things. So yeah, Amerigo gets a big thumbs up for me. The second felt on our list that we got last month was Luna, and this didn't go down as well as Amerigo. Um, and this is, well, see, Luna is a game about priestesses um, and temples. And how this works is there's a series of islands around the middle section, and you need to move between these islands to perform actions to allow you to get people into the temple. Um, but there's just something about the way it fits together that felt really samey, that you would always want to do one particular action or a sequence of them. It felt like that every time you would play it, you would be doing the exact same thing. Um, like it's rare for us to get halfway through a game and think about not wanting to finish it. So, you know what I mean? That's pretty rough. Um, but I, I don't know. It just it didn't fit right. It just didn't. It just didn't fit right. It felt kind. It felt kind of boring and a little bit tedious. Um, so that was our experience with Luna. So that's you know moving on to greener pastures hopefully. Um, and then what else did we play that I should tell you about? that we had a lot of fun with. Actually, I'm going to talk about Las Vegas, <laughs> the dice game that should not be. Um, I don't know if any of you have come across this before, because there's quite a lot of games with the word Vegas in the title. Um, this is not Lords of Vegas, this is just Las Vegas. It's in the numbered, like, Aaliyah series in the small boxes. And this is the most basic game I will ever describe to you. And it sounds awful, even when you show it to people. But for some reason, it's incredible. It is so much fun, and I have zero notion why this is the case. I would I would love for someone to explain it to me. So what um, Las Vegas is about is there are six casinos um, and they're numbered from one to six and they'll all have different payouts at the casinos and everybody will roll dice uh, one at a time and you have to place out whatever numbers you roll um, you get to choose onto that number of casinos. So if you roll a four, well, you can put the four on the four. But if you roll two or three fours, you have to put all of them out on the four. Um, and so you want to put your dice on the best spots for making the most money. And that is the entirety of the game, people. 
you roll some dice and you place them out and it's amazing and it shouldn't be amazing but it is it's really really fun i also find i'm really good at rolling dice randomly which is particularly nice um and there is a little bit of course of thinking to it about where is my opponent going to put his dice next how many dice do they have remaining what are the chances they might roll another six um and it's just it's really really fun you just play for a couple of rounds and whoever has the most money wins and i find myself drawn to it i'm not really sure why i just I wish I knew what its shtick was. It's because most games have that thing that makes them special. This has nothing. I just don't know. But I highly recommend it. And I, it's really funny. Everyone I've shown it to says, yeah, this is pretty boring. Why would we play this? And then goes, oh, wow, that was so much fun. And I think it's it's so, it's got such mass market appeal. I'm surprised it hasn't gone bigger. Um, so that is Las Vegas. It's, it's pretty fantastic. Okay, so I will finish up with one more game that I got to this month. I got, I got to a number of games that I'd only played once. So I'm working through my pile of those. Um, so I finally got back to Yokohama. So, oh, it's another Tasty Minstrel Games title. I'm so obsessed. <laughs> I don't know. They just make the Euro games I kind of like. So hmm, I'll stick with it. Um, so Yokohama is... <laughs> <laughs> it's an economic game uh, well it's a euro it's a euro game and in yokohama you're basically moving between kind of warehouses um to collect things that you can hand in for imports and exports you're kind of in charge of that stuff and then there are places you go to kind of work internationally um gain victory points but mostly it's kind of resource managed in managementing um the interesting thing about this one is how you actually move so each of these buildings are just you know pieces of card and you lay them out in the board together but to get places you have to leave workers behind in in there to be able to move around right so you have to follow like a trail of cubes so you have to plan exactly where you're going next and the more cubes you have in a location the better the action is I, I kind of like that as a mechanic actually it's one of my favorite so you're you know you're planning what well, I want to get so much money this round I need to put three little cubes out there to make sure I can get three monies you know that kind of thing um and it's a very kind of simple but elegant puzzle I I quite I quite like it it's it's not hard to explain but working it all out is still interesting and that seems to be the sweet spot for me these days where the mechanic of the game is straightforward but how you play it, not so much. You know, you have to do a lot of working out on your own. Um, but I had a lot of fun just moving around the board as well and collecting stuff and handing in stuff. And, you know, it's one of those. And I really, really like it. Um, I should have got back to it sooner. It's funny. It was one of those games where we played once and I didn't worry about playing it a second or a third time because I knew we were keeping it. I knew straight off the bat that that was a good one. Um, so it was nice to play it again. Hopefully we'll do a, another bit as well. Also, apparently there is a two player only version, Yokohama Jewel, which I would really love to try because I can see this being better with more. It works okay with two, um, but you get to see kind of less tiles or things like that. So it, it will be cool to see what the two player version has to offer. So I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna write this out um, of games I've been playing. I have been playing other things, of course. I've been playing 10 more games as a cat too than I probably should. Um, but that's just the nature of things at the moment. So what's been popular at your house at the moment? Do, have you been trying to like work your way through your collection either? Um, Cause I saw a number of people doing a challenge where they were trying to play, you know, a game from every alphabet letter in their collection and things like that. Um, and for me, it's been playing the ones we've only played once some more. Or have you just been playing your favorites? Uh, yeah, that's what I'd really like to know. And if so, what is your favorite? What would you play over and over again? Yeah, so if you were stuck in quarantine and you only got to keep one board game, what would it be? There you go, if you only had one. But <laughs> I hope you have more. Uh, all right. So the final section of this um, roundup is, I suppose, like any kind of news and stuff from the channel. So if you've wanted, if you've heard about board games and all that off your head, um, I'll see you <laughs> see you in a later video. If you're curious uh, about what's been going on here or why this looks like this, well, here's your chance. Um, I might try and give you guys a guided tour actually um, on my phone at a, a later date. This room is actually only half painted. Um, but here's the, here's the story. So as most of you know, um, I normally film actually in my games room yes I have a games room um, and that's why I always had the wall of games and stuff behind me um, but the big problem with it was I would have to take up and set up and tear down my equipment every time I wanted to film and for someone like me where filming is already really 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 stressful it just added extra elements of stress that I it was just a, a, a lot so we decided to 
um, to turn our smallest room into an office slash studio so I'm back here and those of you who've been watching me since the start um this is the room I originally started filming in <laughs> this is actually where everything began this used to be our games room it's actually really really small um and it's it's kind of ironic to have come full circle to come back here um so there's been less videos made this month because I've been putting this together, right? So we've been painting things up and hanging things. And I know you can't see the whole room, but there's more, there's more, there's more to it than this. And I'm trying to sort out my camera and things like that in here. Um, this camera lens does um, really cool stuff where it makes the background blur, but it needs a lot of space to do it. And I don't have it in here anymore. So I have to, I'm trying to rejig my life right now is the honest answer. Um, but it's been really good for my mental health. Um, this room is a lot brighter than where I used to be. My office is in here. It's amazing having everything set up so I can just sit down and film whenever the, the want takes me, which is really, really amazing. Um, and I've been trying to kind of put my own stamp on my own channel. Um, because you know, when you start out making these reviews, um, everyone sits in front of a wall of board games. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I quite like the wall of board games, but I wanted it to be a little bit more me I'm talking to you about games rather than me kind of trying to show you all of my games that kind of thing so this is um I'm working on this space making a little bit more me um this notice board needs photographs but there's nowhere to print out photos yet I have a really cool idea for one of those murder boards um hold on with me so have you ever seen in television where someone has all of those ideas and they pin them up in the wall and they connect them together with red string um I'm going to do that with board games but up here so eventually that should, that'll get um, all settled in and I'm just I'm just adjusting to this but it's good it feels good and I can't wait to make more videos in it and I don't have to move anything hurrah so that's been the big excitement in my life has been rearranging things like this it means as well I'm taking myself a little bit more seriously and my videos a little bit more seriously um I dislike very much that the camera is so close to me right now because I'm really taking up a lot of the screen but I'm working on that and I'll see if I can come up with a solution um but yeah so it's looking like it's been a strange month a month of much tumultuousness um but coming out the other side i um, feeling good about things and looking forward to um, making all of these reviews there's some really exciting stuff um yeah there is some really exciting stuff it's been it's been good and it's been nice um so the other thing to note is that there is a new episode of the tabletop inquisition podcast um it came out on monday and we talk about quarantine gaming and it's a really really good episode you should definitely check it out if you're trying to find ways to game without leaving your house or what do you think about kind of those online methods well worth a listen um and as always you should go check it out because it's worth listening to and it's fun um and so there's that and otherwise yeah i'm gonna try and stop talking about here so that's good so i look forward to hearing from you all thank you as always for watching and keep your eyes peeled for some more reviews and stuff coming real real soon so until next time everybody take care bye bye and thanks for watching